I recently attended a hands-off preview for Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, the upcoming Nintendo Switch remakes for the Generation 4 games that initially launched for a Nintendo DS. Ahead of their release for Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, developer ILCA and publisher Nintendo have marketed the remakes as faithful adaptations of the original Generation 4 games. And although the remakes do look faithful to the original experience in terms of structure, I got the sense that they won't feel faithful, and I mean that in a good way. Based on what I saw, it seems like the mechanical improvements made to Diamond and Pearl's formula may ultimately result in a more approachable experience. I think players are going to find these games to be a lot easier to get through than the original Diamond and Pearl. Before we fully dive into the preview, we ask that you hit the subscribe button. It will keep you up to date on GameSpot's video coverage, including previews like this one. We'd appreciate a like as well if you end up enjoying the video. Now back to Pokemon. In terms of overall structure and presentation, yes, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl are faithful adaptations of the original Diamond and Pearl. Unlike Sword and Shield with its over-the-shoulder perspective, realistically proportioned characters, and occasional free camera moments, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl is presented in Pokemon's traditional top-down perspective with a more chibi-like visual style and no free camera. Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl looks like an old-school Pokemon game. The Pokemon Center and Pokemon are separate buildings again, for example. More notably, catching wild Pokemon is once again a mostly random affair. While exploring the overworld, you won't see Pokemon running around as you did in the past few games. Like in the old days, to find a wild Pokemon, you'll have to enter tall grass. You surf over water or go fishing, and you won't know what you're going up against until the fight starts. The one exception to this rule is the new Grand Underground, which looks absolutely massive. The preview didn't show off the entire area, but I did get a chance to look at a map for the Grand Underground, and it looks to be a sprawling assortment of interconnecting caverns. In the Grand Underground, Pokemon wander around, and if aggressive, chase after you, similar to the wild area in Sword and Shield. Many Generation 4 exclusive features return in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. You can bait honey trees to attract wild Pokemon, enter enhanced Pokemon contests, make poffins to improve your Pokemon's conditions, and decorate Pokeball seals with stickers. Amity Park, a place where you can walk around with your Pokemon to strengthen your relationship with them, also returns. They all look to be just as unrewarding as they were in Diamond and Pearl, but they all also appear to be just as easily skippable this time around. That's not where Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl have made strides in Generation 4's formula. These remakes make their most notable changes in regards to catching Pokemon, battling and leveling Pokemon, and exploring. Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl bring forward a lot of the improvements made in Pokemon games since the release of Generation 4. Some are purely aesthetic, but most are mechanical changes, and those mechanical changes could domino effect into an altogether more approachable Generation 4 experience. Hidden Machines return in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, but similar to the last few Pokemon games, these moves are no longer tied to Pokemon. You don't have to give up one of your Pokemon's moves to have it learn an HM. For those who don't know or remember, Generation 4 has an HM problem. You used to have to regularly carry around at least two Pokemon that collectively knew Cut, Surf, Strength, Rock Smash, Waterfall, and Rock Climb just to get through Generation 4. Since you no longer have to do that, it should help you build out a more balanced team. And on top of that, it will be easier to grow the strength of that team thanks to all Pokemon in your party receiving experience for a fight. Experience share is available from the start and applies to your entire party. It's going to be huge for helping to deal with Diamond and Pearl's level pacing issue. In Generation 4, you immediately go to fight the Elite Four and Champion after completing all eight gems. There's nothing to really do in between. That's a hard fight if you don't take the time to grind out and level all members of your team. The highest level Pokemon for the eighth gem is 49, while the Champion has a team of Pokemon that are levels 60 to 66. Most generations have a gap in strength between Gem 8 and the Champion, but Generation 4 is especially tough given the size of the gap and the team that the Champion uses. So you have to train up your team between the 8th Gem and taking on the Elite Foreign Champion in the original Diamond and Pearl. Type matchups are most important for Pokemon battles, but an 11 to 17 level difference is significant enough for the Champion to just tank your hits. Provided Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl keep all trainers at the same levels they were in the original games, the grind between beating the final gym and taking on the Elite Foreign Champion should be a lot shorter, thanks to that experience share. More than anything, however, is that Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl will incorporate current Pokemon typings. That means you'll get Fairy types, which didn't exist when Diamond and Pearl first launched. 
Bringing a fairy type Pokemon into the back to back fights of the Elite Four and Champion is huge, as some of those trainers' hardest hitters are weak to fairy type Pokemon. Beyond that, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl adds a host of quality of life improvements, and autosave features should help to make sure you don't accidentally lose hours of progress. Pokemon Move info will inform you whether the attack you want to do will be effective. A button on the battle screen will quickly pull up the Pokeball page in your bag so you're not scrounging around through menus when catching Pokemon, and a waypoint marker will let you know where to go to next in case you're lost. There are an assortment of other changes too, like being able to access your PC Pokemon from anywhere. As I mentioned before, there are a few aesthetic improvements the remakes make as well, beyond the obvious updated graphics and visuals. The first is character customization. Though I didn't get to see what options are available, your trainer in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl can be customized. A member of Nintendo Treehouse of the Preview told us that there are eight ways to change your character's appearance. Four for female, four for male. And on top of that, each Pokemon move has been reanimated so that every move has its own animation. Though I didn't get to see it, I was told Hyper Beam looks especially awesome. And that's what I saw. All in all, the mechanical changes in these remakes speak to a possibly altogether smoother, far more hassle-free experience. It's obviously too soon to tell, given that we still don't have the games in our hands, but that's the sense I got from watching the game in motion for a half hour, as most of the preview was spent talking about how Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl addresses what players weren't fond of with the original games. So yeah, the remakes may look faithful to the originals, but I think they're going to feel much better to play. We won't have to wait that much longer to find out, seeing as Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl is scheduled to launch for Nintendo Switch on November 19th. If you want to stay updated on our coverage for Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, be sure to subscribe to GameSpot, and like the video if you enjoyed it. It lets us know you want to see more video previews like this one. In fact, you can watch another one of our video previews right now. We recently went hands-on with Forza Horizon 5, another game slated to launch this holiday season.